Hi there. Welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is Joe, and today I would like to help you relax and fall asleep, guided by my voice and the story you are about to hear. Tonight, I will tell you the story of the three little pigs. But before we start, let's make sure that you are snug and comfortable in your bed. Relax your body and close your eyes. Once upon a time, there was a mummy pig, a sow, that had three little pigs. One day, when they grew big and strong, their mother told them that they were old enough to go out and live in the world by themselves. The three little pigs were excited to go off into the world on their own, but before they went out, they had a little powwow to decide what they would do in the big world. After a few minutes of discussion, they agreed that the most practical thing that they should do first was to build a house for each of them. When they told their mother of their plan, she felt proud that she had raised such decent and reasonable sons. But before they left, she gave them one last piece of advice. Watch out for the big bad wolf, because he loves to eat little pigs. And when you build your house, make sure that you build it strong, so that the big bad wolf won't be able to hurt you. Goodbye, my beautiful sons, and good luck, she said as she kissed and hugged them tightly, one by one. The first pig hadn't walked very far when he met a man who was carrying a bundle of straw. Seeing the straw, he suddenly had a brilliant idea of how he should build his house. Please, sir, can you give me some of your straw so I can build a house for myself? The first pig asked in his sweetest voice. The man couldn't resist the little pig's request, and so he gave him the straw to build his house. The first pig built his house very quickly, but because it was made of straw, it wasn't solid. However, despite this, the first pig was proud of what he had built. Everything went well with the first pig's house, and he decorated his house well. He hung lovely yellow curtains in the windows and put pretty wild flowers in a blue ceramic vase. He placed the vase in the middle of the wooden kitchen table that he had made himself. But one day, while the first pig was sitting at the kitchen table sipping tea, the big bad wolf came and knocked three times on the straw door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, the wolf said in his low, scary voice. The pig was startled because he didn't expect the big bad wolf to come at all. Still, he put on a brave face and answered the wolf in his most courageous voice. No, I'll never let you in, not by the hair on my chinny-chin-chin, the little pig said in a squeaky voice. Well then, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, the wolf said in a loud and arrogant voice. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the first pig's straw house down. 
The little pig was terrified, and he ran, screaming for his life. The second little pig was unaware of what had happened to his first brother. He was walking merrily on another road when he met a man stacking an enormous pile of sticks. Looking at the pile of sticks, the little pig suddenly had a great idea how to build his house. The little pig asked in his politest voice, Please, sir, may I have some of your sticks so that I can build a house for myself? Because he asked nicely, the man gave the second pig enough sticks so that he could build a house for himself. The second pig was quite a skilled carpenter, and in no time, he built a lovely house made of sticks. It had one door in the shape of an arch, plus three windows that he had painted in blue, red, and yellow. It also had a nice little garden, filled with sunflowers and yellow bells. The second pig was pleased and proud of his work. One day, while the little pig was cooking soup for lunch, he heard a loud knock at the door. It was the big, bad wolf. Little pig, little pig, let me in, the wolf demanded in his loud, scary voice. The second pig dropped the soup spoon in fright when he heard the wolf's voice. But he managed to put on a brave face. I'll never let you in, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, the second pig said. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, the wolf said. And so... He huffed and puffed and puffed and huffed, and the second pig's beautiful stick house tumbled down. The second pig luckily was not hurt. Still, the little pig was so terrified when he saw the big evil wolf face to face that he scrambled away screaming in the direction of the forest. Just as the first little pig, the second little pig was never seen again. The youngest pig heard the story about his brothers and their houses while he was walking. The story made him feel sad, but he was determined not to let their fate happen to him. He was deep in thought when he chanced upon a man who was stacking a big pile of bricks. Looking at the bricks, he suddenly had a fantastic idea for how to build his house. Please, sir, may you please give me enough bricks so that I can build a strong house for myself? The little pig asked the man in his sweetest and politest voice. Because the youngest pig asked politely, the man agreed to give him enough bricks to build a house. The little pig was an expert bricklayer, so in no time at all, he was able to make himself a solid one-story red brick house. The third little pig was very happy when he looked at the brick house that he had built and he patted himself on the back to congratulate himself for a job well done. One day, when the sun had just risen, while the pig was making a cup of coffee, the big bad wolf came and knocked on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, the wolf said in his scariest voice. The little pig felt secure in his brick house, and he was not afraid of the big bad wolf. He answered the wolf in his calmest voice. 
I'll never let you in, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, the little pig said, even more calmly, in between sips of his morning coffee. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, the wolf exclaimed. So he huffed, and puffed, and puffed, and huffed, and huffed and puffed some more, until he could not huff nor puff any more. The wolf sat down, red-faced and exhausted. He wasn't able to move the brick house an inch, despite all his effort to blow it down. The little pig chuckled to himself when he saw the wolf's sad state and continued to cook a hearty breakfast for himself. He hummed as he tucked in to eat a big plate of five freshly cooked sunny-side-up eggs and toast. Hmm, if I couldn't blow this pig's house down by force, then I'll have to outsmart him, the wolf said to himself, all the while slumped at the corner of the little pig's brick house. Oh, little pig, the wolf said in the friendliest voice that he could muster. I know where to find a field that grows the best turnips. The little pig's ears perked up at the mention of turnips because it was his favorite vegetable. I love turnips. Tell me, wolf, where do you find this field? He asked cautiously because he really didn't trust the wolf. Mrs. Smith's garden down the road has the crunchiest, biggest, and the most delicious turnips. If you want, I can go with you tomorrow at nine o'clock so that we can pick some, the wolf said. The little pig nodded and said, All right, wolf, I'll be ready at nine o'clock tomorrow. The next day, the little pig woke up early at seven o'clock and went to the turnip field by himself. He took all the turnips he could carry and was home before nine in the morning. When the clock struck nine, the big bad wolf came and knocked on the door and asked, Little pig, little pig, are you ready? He said in his gentlest voice. But the little pig said, I've already gone up to the turnip field, and I took all the turnips that I wanted, but thanks anyway. The wolf felt very angry, but he took several deep breaths to calm himself. Uh, by the way, I know where to find an apple tree that has the reddest, juiciest, and crunchiest apples. It's just in the orchard across the field. If you want, we can go together tomorrow at eight o'clock to pick some. All right, wolf, let's go together tomorrow at eight, the little pig said. The next day, the little pig woke up at seven. He got dressed and filled a giant cauldron with water to let it boil, because he was planning to have soup for lunch. After that, he ran to the apple tree in the orchard across the field. He climbed the tree and immediately began picking the juicy red apples. All of a sudden, the big bad wolf came running. How do those apples taste? He asked sneakily. They're delicious. Here, catch some, said the little pig, as he threw a few apples so far away. While the wolf ran to retrieve the apples, the little pig quickly went down the tree and ran to the safety of his house. 
The wolf was so enraged when he realized that he was tricked again. He ran all the way to the little pig's brick house and said in a loud, angry voice, You have tricked me for the last time. I'm coming down your chimney and you'll be sorry, the wolf cried out while climbing up the little pig's chimney. The little pig heard the wolf coming down his chimney, and he immediately took out the lid that covered the water that was already boiling. The wolf fell directly into the scalding water. Oh, how he screamed in pain as he struggled to get out of the pot. He whimpered all the way to the deep, dark forest and was never seen again. With the wolf gone, everything was peaceful again, and it wasn't long before the third little pig found his two lost brothers who were wandering around the forest. The three of them lived happily ever after in the youngest pig's little red house. Did you enjoy this story? I hope that you liked it and that you are now warm under your cozy, soft blankets. Sleep well through the night. Sweet dreams. And if you come back tomorrow, I have another story waiting for you on Soothing Pod. <laughs>